Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope you guys are doing absolutely amazing. This is your boy Case coming at you guys again with another video on Tower of Fantasy. So we are slowly approaching again the global relaunch of Tower of Fantasy. I know there's a lot of you who are in the Discord and just out in the world right now who are extremely excited for this game to finally be releasing. And what I do know is that a lot of you have a lot of questions. Now, before I step into the topic of this video, first and foremost, what I want to do is I want to thank the Ida Discord Cafe for allowing me again to utilize this information. This information will be coming from that Discord from a player by the name of Cytus, an amazing person. Thank you so much for allowing me to use this. But what I am going to do is I'm going to put that their information down below into the description box below because that discord is filled with a lot of amazing people who, in my personal opinion, is a lot more informative than me. It's just that a lot of them aren't content creators. But if you were to ask them any questions, they could give you a much more in-depth, valuable answer than I possibly can. But for those of you guys who are not aware of the information that is out there, I am going to be reporting what's been made available to me that's been made permissible to me. So um, I also want to throw a little bit of a di disclaimer out there that this information is not 100% accurate. This information was created when the CN version of the game was out. Now when Global is coming out, we have no official confirmation that the information that is um, in the CN version of the game in terms of character stats, how good and how bad they are, it's going to be transferable over into the global version. So some characters in a global version may actually end up being better than they were in the CN version. Some characters might actually end up worse. We don't know that information right now just because we don't have access to the game. But take this information with a grain of salt. But what I am going to do for you guys is I am going to put a document on the screen for you guys to be able to look at. And on this document, what you guys will see is it's a Tower of Fantasy DPS weapon setup guide. So I'm going to kind of go over some of the things that is in this document for each character that you guys plan on maining. Now, some of you guys are looking at this document. You're going to probably say, hey, my character is not on that document. I am going to still cover those characters now. I'm going to explain it to the best of my knowledge. There are some characters that I have still yet to play as, so please bear with me. But there is also some characters on here who might not make it into global. Uh, I'm not going to rep be reporting on, on those characters just because the way that Hada has kind of been, handle been handling the collaborations for Tower of Fantasy um, is just really up in air right now. We have no um, confidence right now on whether or not we will be receiving by Yuki and Mark. So for the time being, I don't want to kind of promote that because we have no, no real kind of, uh, relevant resources to be able to report on or, you know, report on whether or not they will be making it into the global version. So to kind of start off, um, on the first bit of information, let's go over King. Now there's a lot of people who love King. Most people will prefer to this character as Sephiroth because of his alt, but there, most of you guys do not know, or you're not aware, but there are three types, there are three types of archetypes in Tower of Fantasy. There are shield breakers, there are main DPSs, and there are support DPSs. Now, what I do want you guys to understand is that just because a character falls into a certain realm, so like how King is labeled here as a shield breaker, that that's not going to apply to um, every single character. There are characters in this game that can fulfill multiple different roles. So they can AKA be a hybrid character. Someone such as like Shiro. Shiro can be a shield breaker, a main DPS and a support character. So not every role is primary for the is primarily um, suited for just one specific role on each character. So just kind of going over back to King though, um, let's kind of go over what are the, the um, benefits to King. Well, he has a very uh, a relatively high damage over time on shield break. He does get a, uh, air, a shield break effect after he breaks a shield. Um, he has a great area burst with his skills, but one of the downfalls to him that it is that says on this document is that he is easily interrupted when casting and uh, his basic attacks. One thing that I do want to kind of add in here too, after playing as King, is that the character is relatively limited to close range. The character struggles when it comes to long range attacks. He struggles when it comes to aerial enemies. Um, so that is one thing that you do want to be um, aware of. Let's step over here into uh, Huma. Now, Huma, 
is a uh, relatively decent at shield breaking she has a relatively high efficiency in that um but she does have a really relatively high weapon charge so um one thing that is a downfall of her is that she just doesn't have a shield breaking effect such as how king does after he breaks the shield one thing that um is great about suma is that she does have two forms so her shield does transform into an axe her axe form in my personal opinion is her best form and once you activate that form um it does an aoe uh, type of area effect attack that attacks all the surrounding enemies near her and she also has in her shield form a um, charge a dashing attack that is a projectile so that is some of the plus and uh, minuses to Huma um, let's step over here to uh, Meryl now Meryl was primarily my favorite character among the starting roster um, some of the plus and minuses when it comes to Meryl she has one of the highest shield breaking efficiencies um, in the game now I'm gonna actually break that down and explain what that actually means and I'm gonna use King as a comparison King out of the starting roster has on percentage wise he has the highest shield breaking efficiency among the, the cast if I'm not mistaken it was 29 um, uh, in CN and then in came Meryl right behind him now what are the differences between Meryl and King because if King has a higher shield breaking efficiency, why would you ever play Meryl? Well, when it comes to Meryl, she has the uh, when it comes to Meryl, she has a relatively higher shield breaking efficiency when it comes to like damage per second. She will actually break a shield a lot faster than King will because of the way that her skills work. So that is kind of the differences between King and Meryl, you know, on the pluses and minuses. You can't really go wrong with both, but I just wanted to make you guys aware of that. She also does have a self heal on her shield break once you do get her at one star. So that's something that's uh, added benefit to her. She's immune to interrupt, something that King is not, um, King does not have. But the downfalls to her is that she does have no shield break damage. She also is a very, very clunky kind of a character. You guys will notice and you will feel it as you're playing as her. Her attacks are relatively slow, but she hits very, very hard and she hit, breaks the shield a lot faster than King will. So um, let's step over here into Shiro. Let's kind of go over some things about her. Now, as I mentioned before, Shiro is kind of a hybrid character. She can fulfill multiple different roles in many different type of comps and parties. So some of the things that are great about her is that she has a high burst with her active skill. She has three dash attacks on her three star. Um, when you achieve her at her three star rating on her awakenings, all her cooldowns reset upon a shield break. So that is a benefit to not just her, but as well as to other weapons. She has a very uh, relatively low active skill range. So that's a downfall for her. She's useless when enemies are typically mobile. So like if you encounter an enemy who's particularly fast because of the way that her attack animations work, she's gonna have a tough time actually hitting those enemies. So there's a, actually a boss in the game who's like on a, on a, uh, on a, uh, I forget what those, uh, a tricycle where it's like one will but he's pretty pretty freaking fast she has a hard time actually hitting that character um so um she also has a very uh not so great switch skill so um that's one thing to be wary about she also um at her one star she greatly uh increases your team burst damage um uh after shield break and she on her um i believe it says oh also during her active skill um one other benefit as well is just like i said um she also has cooldowns on her uh cool after she well no oh, it says after a three step resets after when you achieve her at three stars and you reset um you get a shield break her cooldowns reset that's what that actually says so one thing that th that's great about is that like i said it's beneficial for other weapons so what i mean by that is it's beneficial for other characters um Another thing is that she's relatively uh, reliant on her active skill. Um, I didn't really notice that as I was playing as her, but I know that that was something that was said by a couple of other players as well. So I'm actually gonna kind of go with the majority rule right now. So let's just kind of go with that. Um, in terms of, let's step over here into Crow. Let's go over Crow. Now, when it comes to Crow, here's my opinions on Crow. Crow is a character who can be the best character in a game, game, or he can be the worst character game. He cannot be really in the middle. It's either or. And the reason for that is because 
the the how good this character is going to be is going to be dependent upon how much time and practice the player puts into learning this character he has a really really high um uh difficulty use so when you guys are thinking about maining crow that's something to kind of keep in the back of your mind something that's really beneficial about him is that he has really good backstabs he can execute really well he has a he has built-in crit buffs he's really really good when it comes to aerial attacks and he has very high dps in that category as well the only downfall like i said he's very difficult to use and he also requires a two-piece claudia chip set and he's weak when it comes to lows so this is a character who you guys would kind of if you were to google this character in billy billy or you know somewhere on youtube you're probably going to find some videos of this character soloing world bosses again the only way that that is possible is dependent on the player's skill level so if you don't have a high skill level this character is not going to uh, be very successful for you so keep that in the back of your mind let's step over here into uh subasa now in my personal opinion subasa is the best character among the entire starting roster if you do get this character i do not suggest you reroll. i suggest you build upon this that that specific count and in hopes that you acquire the actual unit along with Tsubasa that you want. She has very, very good dashing attacks. She has aerial rain damage. She has a very high charge rate. Her basic attacks are not so great, so that's kind of a downfall for her. And when it comes to like PVP type of aspects, her um, attacks are can be blocked by players. So that's something to keep in the back of your mind. And let's step over here into um, a couple of other players, uh, characters that's actually not listed. Oh, we could talk about Samir. So when it comes to Samir, um, Samir is actually a very, very weird character to me because she's actually one of the most stylish characters among the starting roster. Most people gravitate towards this character because they pretty much remind her of Dante from Devil May Cry. That's what she reminded me of. But she's extremely, extremely fast. So that's a, a, one of the benefits to her. It says that she has fast hits. She has great DPS and a great charge rate. She has a very, very safe AOE attack in the air. So uh, what you guys are going to find is that if you guys are planning on maining Samir, a lot of the time you guys are going to be just spamming her aerial attack because she is pra almost practically invincible as she's doing that and you can just spam it over and over and over again and it just does great great damage now here's the weirdest part about samir and i noticed this and this is why i stopped playing her in the beta samir is not great with long range attacks believe it or not she does not have great long range attacks and she uses guns i think how to kind of really made her in a very very weird fashion it's like dude if you're gonna use guns shouldn't shouldn't long range attacks be the the benefit of having a gun because that's mainly what the weapon is primarily used for for long range attacks and not only that the character as good as she is in the air she's also very very bad she's almost when it when you fight an enemy in the air with samir Here's what you're going to find. You're going to find that you're actually kind of having some struggles because she doesn't really outside of her, um, her kind of like her, I would say her bullet rain. She doesn't really do much. So you're going to be fighting an aerial uh, enemy and you're going to find that, dude, it's so hard for me to freaking kind of hit this kind of enemy. So when enemies take to the air, one thing that kind of sucks about her, she doesn't really have a really good way to really counteract with like some type of form of an anti-air um, enemies that take to the air. So that's something that you guys want to consider. Now, I'm only going to focus on the starting roster. There are many other characters that are coming in the future on this document. So I don't want to go over them just because um, we, are, we don't have to prepare for them right now. When the time comes for those characters to release, I will go over them. But hopefully this document is, uh, this information was helpful to you guys. And I also do know that there's two characters that I um, have not went over. I'm gonna go over in one second, Coco Ritter, and I'm also gonna go over um, Zero. And matter of fact, let's just go over Zero right now because he's gonna be relatively quick, quick. So in terms of Zero, he's not on this document and it's okay because I will give you guys my impression of Zero because I played as him in the beta. Zero is a character in the CN version right now who, in my personal opinion, just really hasn't found his place yet. There hasn't been a, a certain characters that have been released yet that he really um, suits well with. And on top of that, um, he is a support character. And the thing that I find that is his biggest issue is just that 
there are other characters in the game who fulfill that role who just does what he does a lot better and that's why he kind of finds himself sometimes on the lower end and why you don't see most players kind of playing at zero so i think that he's a cool character but if there are characters who can do what he does a lot better and more efficient and be more viable um, to the comp then why would you play zero and that's kind of the position that he kind of finds himself in right now currently in the cn version now when it comes to coco ritter i haven't really had a lot of time to actually touch on this character so i can't really give you guys accurate information on how good and how bad what are the pluses and minus to this character so for that for the sake of i'm not after ch i'm not chasing views um, I want to just purport accurate information to you guys. I'm going to refrain from giving you guys any information on Coco Ritter. I think aesthetically the character looks pretty cool, but in terms of just how good the character is, you guys will have to find that information from someone else. Um, I don't want to report inaccurate information to you guys and set you guys afoot on the wrong path. So. Hopefully you guys got a lot of uh, value out of this information. Um, we will be getting our first limited banner character in the form of Claudia here pretty soon. Um, who knows if that will be the first banner in global. We, like I said, we don't know, but she was the first banner in uh, the CN version. But um, I'm gonna refrain from uh, reporting on her until her actual banner is actually announced. So you guys can be expecting that in a, in a future video. But as always, guys, I hope that you guys found value in this video. I hope that it has done justice for you guys and gave you guys some answers to some of your questions as global release is slowly, slowly approaching. Um, remember, take this with a grain of salt. But if you guys would please make sure you rate, like, comment and subscribe to the video. It helps me out greatly when you guys do that. And make sure you guys go check out the Ida Cafe Discord. There are so many amazing people in this Discord, such as Sidus, who gave us this document. And I just want you guys to not miss out on any information that's made available to the public just by the, by the sake of clicking into a Discord. So as always, guys, this is your boy Kays, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.